everybody, Terrence Pop here, RetardingList.com with another episode from the Lair. I got a question in the email. Uh, somebody's out there watching my uh, my army stories. I love them, but uh, they asked me a question um, in regards to inspections. Uh, are they the same in the Army as they are in the Marine Corps? Uh, well, I was never in the Marine Corps, so I don't know how they run their shit, but, uh, you know, I would say they're probably very similar, depending upon who your chain of command is and what the hell they have, them, uh, what they're looking for. Now, when you're in basic training, they start off with the um, getting you ready for the inspections that will take place when you're at your unit. So they come, they look at your wall locker, and they give you like a, it's like a picture or a diagram of how they want you, the inside of your wall locker to look, to include underwear, t-shirts rolled up, how many in a drawer, uh, how, where you put your brass. It's, it's like at any given moment when you're in basic, your wall locker should be opened up and displayed and it should look sort of like it's a museum, which you and I both know is unrealistic, but that's the way it was explained to me. Okay, there's the wall locker one and then there's the TI-50 inspection and where they make you canoe your, uh, roll out your sleeping bag and canoe it out and they put your LB, your helmet, uh, your rucksack and all your other you know odds and ends and Usually the way the inspections work, you know, very rarely will they accept your shit at the first glance Especially if you're learning about how to do inspections They scrutinize everything they fuck with everything and some people don't really grasp the concept That no matter what you do your shit is still gonna be fucked up Okay once you realize that, it doesn't really, it becomes way, way less stressful. I mean, I watch guys implode, you know, staying up at night, you know, buffing their shoes, cleaning off their LB with a toothbrush, all kinds of crazy ass shit, uh, you know, but you know, that's neither here nor there. I mean, because in any given moment, you're going to run into people in your everyday life. Some are going to have OCD, and some guys are going to be pretty laid back. Very rarely do you have anybody go from OCD to being laid back, usually not without a long, drawn-out beatdown or a life-changing event. That's neither here nor there. So this bunch of stories, is I'm going to call it inspections, okay? And these are some of the funny stories about uh, people, you know, looking in, at your shit and uh, fucking you up for it. I mean... If you live in the barracks, this is pretty much what's going to happen. Uh, if you're in an infantry unit, this is pretty much the frequency that these uh, inspections take place. Okay, uh, you'll have a full inspection of your equipment, usually quarterly. Uh, that may or may not include a wall locker inspection and a, an inspection on your room. They usually all go together, they knock them out together, but I've seen it happen separately. Uh, and then you'll have usually a once a month barrack, barracks inspection uh, at a minimum by your platoon sergeant or your first sergeant. Okay, I've had the first sergeant <laughs> walk through the barracks uh, all the time. And the worst time for them to show up is when it's unannounced because that's when you find all the crazy shit. And we'll get to that. <sighs> Let's see. Okay, twice a year you're gonna have a company equipment uh, you know showdown, and it usually involves the subcomponent inventory. For instance, you say um, camouflage kit uh, vehicle. Okay, they're gonna look at that for the subcomponents, like how many aluminum poles, uh, uh, net spreaders, how many, you know, how many, I don't know, what is it, tie downs, pe you know, pegs, and all that other bullshit. They really get into the details, and if you're missing a couple of fucking, you know, tent stakes and shit, they may or may not, you know, force the lieutenant who signed for it to, uh, you know, take a statement of charges to have that shit fucking corrected. Okay, let's see. Uh, usually, the first Friday before Christmas leave begins, you will have a in-ranks Class A inspection. Uh, they usually do it in, in the morning and. You know, after lunch, everyone's pretty much released to go take care of deficiencies. And then your squad leader or platoon sergeant can check those deficiencies at the end of the day to see if they're corrected. 
Usually there's not a lot of stress in this, but I've seen guys uh, pull a pin in the fat grenade and gain 20 fucking pounds and uh, try to fucking, you know, stick their meat suit into a suit which no longer contains their girth. So you'd see like huge amounts of meat hanging over the neck, splits up the back, you know, all kinds of crazy shit. But hey, it is what it is. In Legland, dudes get fatter, I'm just saying. Let's see, there's the health and welfare. Now, they say it's for health and welfare. It's, the, it's for everyone there. It's not. Usually a health and welfare is conducted when the chain of command finds out some crazy ass shit's been going on in the barracks and uh, they want it to stop. Um, a lot of times they'll say they're going to have a health and welfare and, you know, the, the, well, the way I used to do it, I would tell everyone on, like, on a Wednesday, I'm having a health and welfare, and this is what I'm looking for, and we're going to conduct it. Everyone would like, give me the groan, and I'm like, oh, on Friday. So I'm giving pretty much everybody two days to get the shit out of the fucking barracks or in their living area. And if I come through and I find it after I've given you such a blatant warning, I'm royally going to fuck you up. That's just, that's just the way it is. Uh, let's see. One of the key things, uh, especially when I was lower enlisted, that I was really good at, I had a reputation for being the pack rat. And what I mean by that is, you know, during your, you know, you go into the motor pool or wherever you go about your duties, you see things that you may need or may not need in the future. Uh, a lot of things I would do is if I saw something that was, you know, a, a big ticket item or something that should have been secured, I would secure it for you. And uh, basically m the way I thought about it, if it's not tied down and it's not secured equals not my fucking problem. Okay. And then you would have the pack rat. Uh, there's usually a bunch of pack rats in the unit and we would always know who they were, you know, sister platoons, sister battalions. And uh, you would collect all of your pack rat shit and keep it in the, in the, platoon area or the platoon lockdown because you knew when they were going to have a, like a layout or sub component you would have bargaining you know chips you can know what you could barter for what and i'm telling you like there were times where i'd have uh a tow bar which is not even our m tow um i found it at uh, yakima firing center when uh, a bunch of 113s came by and it fell off the fucking humvee i i, I off the track i took it and put it in our humvee uh, four, you know, four or five Pioneer toolkits. Those were laying around all the time because they're supposed to be secured under the vehicle by the gas tank. And if you don't put a lock in there and lock them in position, especially when you drive off, a lot of times they vibrate and get knocked loose and fall free from the vehicle. So I have like four or five of those. And my platoon knew, my platoon leader and my platoon sergeant knew I was the pack rat. And on a couple occasions, I get called in to talk to the lieutenant. He's like, hey, just found out we're going to do a subcomponent hand, hand receipt inventory. And uh, it's going to be in a couple of days. And I'm short, um, you know, some, I'm short fuel cans, water cans. Uh, we lost one of our spare tires on the Humvee. And, uh, you know, he'd give me other lists I have. And I'm like, okay, well, what do we have in excess? And then I would tell him what I have in excess. And I'd put them together. And then I would go about and I would talk to other pack rats or other supply sergeants from other platoons and other battalions. And a lot of times they'd be like, so uh, I'm looking for uh, some water cans. Uh, what, do you, what do you need? And they'd be like, you know, um, I can really use a complete, uh, you know, camo net kit. If you get me one of those, I can get you, uh, you know, four water cans and four fuel cans and I, I would put that in the back of my mind and then you know i'd go along and i'd do my thing and now you always know like hey you know first platoon's looking for this i have that they want that so i i give it to him i get the item that they want i trade it to them and get what i need and uh you know i was so good at being the pack rat i remember this one time i get called up to see the company commander I walk into the room and my platoon leader's in there, my platoon sergeant, and they shut the door. Usually when they shut the door, this is not a good thing, okay? It's never a good thing. Close door with the commander, right? especially if, and if the first sergeant's in there. Luckily, he wasn't. He was doing some other shit, but it was just the commander, my platoon leader, and my platoon sergeant. You get called in there and they shut the door, you know, you go, oh, fuck. And things race through your mind, like, what the fuck did I do? What the fuck did anybody know? I mean, it's, it's crazy. 
So I get called in there, and the company commander's like, Bob, uh, we're having a battalion layout, and we're missing a buffer uh, from the 2nd Platoon. And when I signed for this company, there were three buffers, one for each platoon, and now I have two. Uh, what can you do to help me out? I'm like, okay, a buffer. A buffer is a big ticket item. All right, usually they're, you know, usually nobody trades for those. So if you need a buffer, you're going to pretty much have to acquire it. It's not stealing because, you know, it's just equipment. Like it's in the Army. It's staying in the Army. It's basically the equivalent of rats taking straw and moving it to each other's, uh, different people's nests. That's all it is. So I know that one of our sister battalions across the quad, because um, I've been over there a couple of times because I talked to this chick that was there, uh, they would leave the, the door unscared because people would come in late at night. And lo and behold, in the corner, the three times that it was there, unsecured buffer. Usually they keep it in a wall locker and they lock it, whatever. So I prep, I prep the, the paint. Um, I put together the stencil set. Uh, we had the um, a Dremel tool to grind off the old serial number and another one, that, one of those metal ones where you can just put it on there and bang in a new one. So we looked at the hand receipt. We got the serial number for the buffer that's missing. About 2, 2.15 in the morning, I run over there, go up to the second floor, grab the buffer and take the fuck off, all right? I make sure I go a roundabout way so I'm not really being followed. I had it up in our platoon area and I had three or four different stations. It was, just, it was like an assembly line. Within 15 minutes, I had that buffer a different color. I had the correct serial number on it and I had it stenciled for our company, our platoon and lab. And I put it in, in the wall locker and I, sh and I shut it. The next morning, battalion commander came through with the company commander. They pulled out the buffer and they're like, oh, all right. They take off the one pad. Um, it's basically a little, it's like a little control handle, you know, pad. You take four screws, you take it off. There's a second serial number in there. And they looked at that and, oh, wow, that one matched the one that's on the, on the buffer. So this must be the correct buffer. And they put it back together. Never mentioned again. Boom. Uh, let's see. Um, there was another time I actually, uh, I had to go over and uh, I went to one of the engineer units. They were about two miles up uh, and break into their motor pool in the middle of the night. Cause like this is the late eighties. There wasn't really cameras everywhere and all motion detector and all, it just didn't exist. So literally I go in there with like six guys, two teams of three and we stole two Humvee tires and basically put blocks. <laughs> You know, I pulled an LA fucking tire job. I mean, what, what, that's, that's, what's what happened? We roll the tires out in the middle of the night, take them to our area and put them on our Humvees and secure them to the back so they're the, the spare tires. Because people would do it to us, we would do it to them. Again, it's a vicious circle. <laughs> okay, now, uh, I learned the hard way, okay, because there was a couple times with these inspections where I would spend this insane amount of time cleaning my equipment, making sure it was good, only to have, you know, my squad there and platoon sergeant come in and tell me it's all fucked up. So me being the pack rat, I had a second set of everything, everything. A lot of it was brand fucking new. And I went over to CIF on the other side of uh, on the North Camp where it used to be on Fort Lewis and actually traded some of my stuff to people I knew that worked behind the counter. I'm like, hey, I need a brand new one. So I'd have a brand, I had brand new rucksack, brand new helmet, brand new LBE. So when they lay out, I would set out a brand new sleeping bag, put everything on there, brand spanking new. And there's nothing they could do to me. You know, a couple of times they open up my wall locker and find my old shit. And they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, hey, I got two sets of shit. This is my inspection shit. And I had a couple guys that were like, well, what do you mean you have two, uh, two sets of shit? I go, well, um... Sorry, sir. You know, I've, I'm an evil genius. I suffer from EGS, evil genius syndrome. I understand I'm not going to get stressed out over this bullshit. And you can just look at my new shit, and that's the way it is. So I got over on that. I'd always have a lot of spare time once you learn how to work those fucking angles. And another one, if you go to the field, they'd come back, and then you have to clean your weapon and take it up to the arms room, and he would inspect it and kick it back. And... 
you know, early on, I would take it up there six, seven, eight fucking times to have it kicked back. So finally, I learned, fuck it. I cleaned that weapon well. And then I just wouldn't even fuck around. I go get a soda, candy bar, shoot the shit, and wait till, you know, people like, hey, we want to go home. And then usually, if I did that, I'd wait till like the second to last guy to turn in his weapon. Always made it. Always. Took out the fucking uh, stress right there. No problem. All right, well, you know, that is basically the inspection uh, fucking system that the army has. Uh, just let me think of another one. All right, this is another one. This happened in the Ranger Battalion, but uh, this is 9th ID here, but this is actually a really funny ins inspection system. Our inspection story. We're having the battalion commander and company commander do a walkthrough. It's basically the one or two times that would happen in the year right, when I was at the Ranger Battalion. And I was running the sniper section, and I had six guys in the section, and me, I made the seventh. So we're watching on the VCR uh, Dr. Strangelove, you know, because it takes forever for them to come around the fucking, you know, to all the rooms. And our, they're coming to ours last, so we're watching the shit. And we're, it was really weird because the battalion commander was walking down the hall just before the one scene where the guy rides the fucking H-bomb down to start World War III. So we fucking pause it. You know, the battalion commander walks in there, looks at our shit, and goes, hey, what are you guys watching? Director Strange Love? We're like, sir, yes, sir. Oh, it's the bomb scene. He'd sit down there, turn it on for like 10 minutes. He's like, woo, I love this scene. And after it was over, like, you guys are good to go? And they would leave. All right, so that's the inspection system. I have a couple more stories about that, but we'll get that get to that down the road. You have a good day.